Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mr. Bryce. I'm with Susquehanna Valley High School here in Conquin, New York, and we are studying for the Algebra One Common Core Regents. We are reviewing actual questions from January 2016. We're starting with number 13 because we already had uh, the previous 12 questions in two different videos, I'm trying to keep the videos to 10 minutes. The table below shows the cost of mailing a postcard in different years, during which time interval did the cost increase the greatest average rate? Whenever you see average rate, you should think delta y over delta x, which means the change in y over the change in x. So when, when it's not given, the first one is going to be x and the second one is going to be y. Delta means subtract. So I'm going to do 1971 minus 1898, and we get 73. Then we subtract the next. I'm going to do 1985 minus 1971. Now I'm going to remember them doing the right one minus the left one, and that is 14. And then we do. 2006 minus 1985, and that equals 21. Then the last one, 2012 minus 2006, and that's 6. So those are our delta y's. Our delta y's are 73, 14, 21, and 6. Now we're going to look for, or sorry, that's our delta x's. Our delta y's, I did the right minus the left, so it's 6 minus 1 is 5, 14 minus 6 is 8, 24 minus 14 is 10, 35 minus 24 is 11. Now what we have to do is we have to put our delta y's over our delta x's, so it's going to be 5 over 73. Then the second one is 8 over 14. Then I compare the 10 over 21. And the last one is 11 over 6. It says, during which time interval did cost increase the greatest rate, the greatest. So we can turn all of these into decimal. So I wrote down the decimals that I remember you just do the top divided by the bottom into your calculator. And this one, you know, without even doing any of them, we realize that that one is going to be the greatest because the numerator, the top number, is bigger than the denominator, the bottom number. And that one was the 11. Uh, and the 6, which was from 2006 to 2012. So let's see if that's one of our choices. 2006 to 2012 is. If that wasn't one of our choices, then we look for the next largest and the next largest and so on. Remember, the key to this question is delta y over delta x which means subtract the y's over subtract the x's. Now let's take a look at question number 14. Number 14 is asking us to complete the square. So remember, when we're completing the square, a equals 1. Good, we can't complete the square unless a equals 1. b is negative 8, and then c is negative 7. Half of b is negative 4, and then 1 half of b squared is 16. Now that we have our uh, b and our half of b squared, those are the ones that we're going to use when we're completing the square. Remember, this is called completing the square. So the first thing, there are two things that you can do. Uh, okay, you can either add 7 
or uh, I don't like to add 7 first because we want to do the vertex form. What we're going to do is we're going to add half of b squared to both sides. So x squared minus 8x plus 16. We're adding half of b squared to both sides minus 7 equals 16. I just added half of b squared to both sides. Now, I can factor this, that part right there, and we can see that it's not going to look like any of the choices. So I am going to add the 7 to both sides because I know there's a number on the right side of each one of these. So that's what it's going to want me to do. Uh, I have the x squared minus 8x plus 16 equals 23. Now, I immediately know that the choice is going to be 2 or 4. I factor this. Remember, it's going to be parentheses x and then plus half of b, plus negative 4 equal, uh, squared. Don't forget your exponent of squared equals 23. Well, that's not one of the choices, but when you're adding a negative, it's the same thing as subtracting. So the answer is choice two. If we were to complete it, if we were to finish it, the next step uh, would be x minus 4. We're just going to change that to x minus 4 because adding a negative is subtracting 4. Uh, and we're taking the square root equals the positive or negative square root of 23. And then we add 4 to both sides, x equals 4 plus or minus the square root of 23. So any of those could have been the choices, just happened to be that one. Remember, if you have any questions, ask me in class. That's the whole purpose of this. Let's go on to number 15. A construction company uses the function f of p where p is the number of people. p is the number of people working on a project. So you, if you don't have a highlighter, underline it. P is the number of people working on a project to model the amount of money it spends to complete the project. A reasonable domain for this function, domain is the x value, range is the y value, domain is input, range is output. So here we're talking about people. How many people do you have? And the output would be money. Uh, the amount of money that it spends. So, can we have half of a person? We can't have half of a person. Can we have negative people? No, we can't have negative people. Okay, so we're going to eliminate positive and negative uh, integers and positive and negative real numbers. Now, let's think which one of these, which one of these are fractions, which one of these are numbers that can't be like half of a person. Integers are positive and negative whole numbers. That's why I don't like this because they just, they said positive integers. So just the positive integers, that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, also known as um, counting numbers. Here the key is to know uh, that domain is the input, which is the x value, and range is the output, which is the y value. And to answer these questions, uh, you have to know what the set of numbers are. Are they uh, fractions? So the ones that are fractions are going to be integers, uh, are going to be actually real numbers, or negatives, which are the integers. Uh, fractions are also uh, rationals. OK, if you have any questions, make sure you ask me in class. Which function is shown in the table below? So we just have to use our noodle here and remember that f of x It is the same as y equals. So 
we go to our calculator and we hit the y equals key and we say by the way one is the wrong choice but i just want to show you um we type in 3x <coughs> excuse me then we hit uh second table and we take a look at the table now notice that uh in the question it starts at negative two so i'm going to go up to negative two and the answer is negative six this is not negative six so that one is out first one wrong i just go to y equals i hit clear and i type in the next equation i'm going to go to what i think is the right answer y equals three exponent x hit the right arrow to get out of that now we're going to hit second table we're already at negative two and it gives me a 0 0.11111 and a 0 0.33333 and then the next numbers are zero one that matches oh, sorry zero one matches and then one three matches two nine matches and three twenty seven matches so now out of curiosity i wonder what point one 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 is as a fraction so i can go to my calculator again go to the regular screen and put in point one repeating a whole bunch of them turn into a fraction do math enter enter and it gives me one over nine so that one matches also so to turn a decimal into a fraction you hit math math is not spelled with an e math enter and then enter again as long as the frac the decimal is already on the screen. That wraps it up for today's lesson. If you have any questions, make sure you ask me in class. See you soon.